this idea of jihad, it's a noble concept. It's the idea of fighting for what is right. It's as simple as that. And people have a right to do that. They have a right to defend their homes, to defend their religion, to defend their lands against the predations of aggressors. The Quran says, أَعِدُّ مُسْتَطَعْتُ مِنْ قُوَّةِ وَرَيْبَاطَ الْخَيْرِ Always be in preparation. Why? Because the best way of maintaining peace is to always be prepared for war. And that is unfortunately a truth of the world that we're living in until human beings can sit down in civil discourse and work out their problems like human beings. As long as you have people out there that are willing to get and take what they want by hook or by crook, by force and by power, then you need to have people prepared to stand up against that. And pacifism, the pacifist in the end of the day, is somebody that becomes landless and a victim. And that's why Aboriginal peoples, traditionally, the reasons that they survived is because they lived in places nobody wanted. Now they want the forests of Brazil. And so look at all those Aboriginal people that are just get wiped out because they want their wood. But traditionally, nobody bothered them because nobody wanted to go and live in the jungles of Brazil. Nobody wanted to go live in the outback of Australia. The Aboriginals were fine. They didn't have any problem. But now they want to graze their cattle there. So suddenly you've got problems. The same with the Native Americans in this country. When they wanted to graze their cattle, they needed to wipe out the buffalo. And that's what happens to uh, Aboriginal peoples. And that's why Islam is just telling people to be prepared to defend yourself because that's the nature of the world you're living in. So the idea of submitting to Allah, and that's why the Muslims long before Grotius or any of these European developments of international law, which are now seen really as platitudes, I mean, I'm talking at the level of people that are running the world. You know, I read their stuff, read foreign affairs and read, I mean, read what they say. This is not conspiracy theory. This is just what they talk about. They're very open about it. Moral high ground is for the masses. The reality of it is it's just real politic. It's business as usual. So now, unfortunately, in the modern Muslim world, and one of the signs of the end of time, and I will say about jihad, if you look at the rules of engagement, who determines the rules of engagement? Islamic rules of engagement in the Muqtasar of Sidi Khalil, Haruma Nebrun Summa, is prohibited to use poisoned arrows, which is basically biological warfare. I mean, Muslims develop rules of engagement. The Prophet said, do not poison the wells of your enemies. This is biological warfare or chemical warfare, basically. Don't use fire in fighting your enemies because only Allah punishes with fire. Nuclear holocaust. We use incendiary bombs all the time. This country, we use incendiary bombs. People are incinerated, literally. And you can see Nagasaki and Hiroshima, they have footage of the shadows of people that, just a shadow of people just blasted, annihilated. 100,000 civilians. They were civilians. There were only 10,000 Japanese soldiers in both of those cities. And they knew that. And that was actually taught to them by the British. Mad Bomber Browning or something. British war theorist who thought that the best way to subdue a people into submission was to attack their civilian population. William Tecumseh Sherman, the march to the ocean. I mean, this is a civil war theory. The Confederates didn't have that concept. I mean, they were deeply troubled by this idea of making civilians suffer. But the idea of Sherman was war is hell and there's no nice way to wage war. And the best way to end it is just make the civilians suffer until the infrastructure breaks down because no state can support an army if the civilians are not behind it. I mean, that was the idea. And this is why Dresden and the bombing of the German civilians is the same thing. These things are prohibited in Islam. And that's why if you look at the rules of engagement in Islam, Muslims should not be ashamed of them. There's some things we should be proud of that these were given to us 1,400 years ago, not killing, it's mutawatir hadith, multiply transmitted hadith of not killing women and children. is absolutely prohibited in jihad to kill women and children. It's certainly not raping or pillaging. The idea of war booty, which is permissible in Islam, but yasalunuk anad anfal. Allah says, anfal are Allah and his messengers. You can't take them. And one of the worst crimes in Islam and one of the greatest wrong actions is predation during war, is to actually take property from people. No, it's the imam has to collect the property and then it's distributed. So there's rules of engagement to make people civil in their behavior. 
Sayyidina Abu Bakr, when he sent his troops out, he said, don't poison wells, don't cut fruit trees, don't kill livestock, don't kill religious people, don't kill old people, don't kill women, don't kill children. He would actually walk out and remind them of these principles. And these were completely alien to the Jahili Arabs. I mean, these were deeply revolutionary ideas.